Hello there, this is Monique here from LeanSixSigmaSource.com and today's tutorial is going to be on how to perform a failure modes and effects analysis. Let's get started. What we're going to cover today is what is a failure modes and effects analysis? What are the components of this analysis? Um, when do we want to use this tool? And I'll also go over a Sigma Excel demonstration. So what is the failure modes and effects analysis? Well, it's a tool used to identify, quantify, prioritize, and evaluate risk. The goals here are to reduce the risk of failure, ensure that failures are detectable, and also prevent failures from happening. Now, why would we want to do that is because we want to keep track of potential failures and the countermeasures to reduce the risk and ensure that um, we um, prevent those failures from happening. So what are the components? Well, you'll have a rating score called a risk priority number, and it is the product of your severity, occurrence or likelihood, and your level of detection. It will also um, record in this form the potential effects of the failure, what are the current controls that we have in place, and what is the recommended action. So when do we want to use that? Well, in the analyze phase, um, if you have your as-is process map, um, it would be helpful to use the failure modes and effects analysis to determine the level of risk in each, um, each step in the process and determine what is the risk of failure and are the failures detectable. Now, when you get to the improve phase, you want to evaluate the impact of proposed changes. So you want to make a change that's going to reduce your risk and this tool is going to help you to keep track of um, how well you did with respect to risk reduction. Then in the control phase you're going to have your, your um, risk assessment numbers and you're going to be able to sort them from highest to lowest and be able to put in your control plan which failure modes are most critical to the process and you want to make sure that you have um, in your control plan the recommended response or the appropriate response if a failure occurs. So that will be a component of your control plan. So let me do a Sigma Excel demonstration on inventory stock and let me switch over to Excel here. And what I'll do is I'll just show you an example from the sample data from Sigma XL. So I'll go to Start, All Programs, Sigma XL, Sample Data, and it's a template and a calculator on the worksheet. So I'll open this spreadsheet up, and it's FMEA, and here's an example straight from uh, Sigma XL. Um, and like I said, to get to it, you would go to Sigma XL templates and calculators, and then it's under failure modes and effects analysis. All right, now that I have this pulled up, you can see here that this is showing your um, potential failure modes. And what I want to show you first is are the guidelines. So the severity here, um, it's rating from 1 to 10 um, with um, severity at 1 which would be uh, unnoticed and not affect the performance or as high as a 10 would be an injury to the customer or an employee. Um, those are your severity guidelines and those go from 1 to 10. For a current, you can see that um, within this form it already has, you know, a 10 um, occurrence rating would be more than once a day and all the way down to a one would be once every six to nine years. For detection guidelines, again, it's a one to 10 rating where a 10 would be defect caused by failure is not detectable, which is um, bad. And very, um, very good would be a one defect is obvious and can be kept from affecting a cus the customer or the employee. So you can see that you, the detection, occurrence, severity rates from 1 to 10 and it gives you a really nice guideline within this form that shows you exactly what each number means. So if we go back up here, 
they have an example of inventory stock. So in the, the process step here is inventory stock. Okay. So um, then it would say, well, what is the failure mode? Well, the stock is in the wrong location. What is the potential effect of failure? Well, you would be unable to locate the stock. What's the severity of that? We will rate that as a five, just for this example. And then the potential cause of failure is the correct location is full. And that happens sometimes. All right, and the currents would be seven. And stock is checked twice a year is your current control. Your detection level is a nine, which will make your risk priority number 315. So when you get to your recommended action here, um, you might say, um, uh, audit stock monthly. And then you would want to put a responsibility and target date completion. So you might say that Bob M is going to do that, and that's going to be done by um, 12 um, 1 2009. And then you're going to write the action taken, um, developed. monthly stock procedures for audit perhaps and then you want to um, go back as I said in your improved phase and determine with the, your group uh, what do you think you uh, would be your new severity occurrence and detection rating and then come up with your revised priority number. So that's just a, a brief example or overview of how that works. And um, that's a Sigma XL demonstration on that. And what we covered today was what is a failure, failure modes and effects analysis, the components of that analysis, and when to use it. So thanks for watching. This is Monique here from Lean Six Sigma Source dot com. Have a great day.